Hey guys, I definitely had to make a video response to this. Uh, if true, this is pretty crazy that Alpha Investment has a quarter million dollars in Faro standard and collector's cases. So if we go by what he's saying, he has about a thousand collector cases of Faro's Beyond Death. And even if he were to buy them for 180, a thousand times 180 is $180,000, which would make sense because then he would have 70,000 in the regular boxes. Um, this is all time bad set. Like when I mean all time bad set, I have played Magic since beta, and I know when a set is really bad. Um, I know when people don't show up to their FNMs and they're not appealing. Uh, also, you see the differences in the price. You have one or two Chase Mythics, just like Dragon Maze. Dragon Maze had one Mythic that had all the value, Voice of Resurgence. Um, and then had maybe a secondary card that was um, the, the Mythic that would hit you and take you down to one. I think that card was like $10 at some time. So yeah, you did have a card over 30 over 50 And then you had a second card, which was kind of like around 10 to 15 and that's a very bad set. That's not a healthy set. Uh, typically in the sets that do well, think Shocklands, Fetchlands, um, they have cards that are over the price of the booster pack, not just one or two. And whenever you see a Mythic in Standard go for less than $2, a Mythic Planeswalker in Standard, uh, things have really gone awry. Like things are just out of control MTG financial wise. So this is a pretty risky thing, but I think uh, Rudy's smart enough to mitigate the risk. So if he's buying them at a very cheap price, which I'm sure at this point distributors are selling to them to him for basically nothing right now. So you have a dude, uh, he's selling for 182.95 free shipping. Um, you have another dude 184. Um, I talked about this. You had people buying at 350 and then 300 and then 250 and then 200. And I could argue until the cows come home, but I think this product still is going to drop. And I'm going to screenshot it. Um, Rudy says it's the bottom, but hasn't he said that already about this set? Like, it's not the bottom. Um, also, Philia just dropped. And <laughs> um, I'm going to need to buy lots of the waifu Philia. Uh, even even though that's not smart for me to do, but I'm going to go all wedge like, um, except I won't use my Patreon dollars, right? I don't have any of that. And I won't use my subscribers to pretend I'm running a charity. I'm just going to do it myself because I have a business location. I have two business locations I can order 15 plus from. I have my own home. I have a second home. So I can order at least 60 of the Filias. So I would have 245, which actually is exactly what I need. I need a way to acquire Filias, foil Filias, at like a bulk rate, at like a very a massive buy. And, uh, and they, they come in play sets, so they fit perfectly in my four binders. But anyway, uh, back to Pharaoh's Beyond Death. Um, I'm not too surprised Rudy took such a big gamble in this set, uh, mainly because uh, for him, it's like what I said. Um, if a dude is selling a Black Lotus for $10,000, but they go to Rudy to sell it for two, yeah, anybody can flip that Black Lotus for at least five, right? Um, so this is what I'm talking about. You got the $30 voice of resurgence. Our voice was a little higher. You had another card. So the $13 card was not valuable until recently until it's being played in modern, I believe. And then you have two $10 cards. But what I want to alert you to is you got a $2 Mythic Planeswalker in standard. Never a good sign. You're the the god on the front of the... I told you that god was really bad. And it started at like something insane. Some pre, insane pre-order amount. But I looked at it and said, oh, this card's bad. So it's $4. It's the, uh, the card on the booster pack. Uh, and people said, oh, this is going to be game-changing. I was like, uh, it's good, but... For you to be a good card in Modern or even Pioneer, you're competing against some behemoths in the free slot. Plus, it's two colors. 
So two colors. I mean, you have your EDH card at nine dollars. Uh, it's overall you got your Elspeth at four dollars, which again, for your Chase Mythic Planeswalker, not a good sign to look at. I get it. I mean, it, it really is. If you can buy Pharos Beyond Death for fifty bucks a box, yeah, it's good to buy it and sell it for eighty. Um, it's the buy price that people don't understand. Rudy will make money. He's a very smart individual, but people don't get how he's making money. It's really simple. So if a Black Lotus um, retails for ten thousand, a guy comes in the store, sells Rudy to Black Lotus for two thousand. Yeah, he can definitely sell it for closer to eight or nine thousand. Um, no Black Lotus will ever come to my store, right? Because why would, I mean, no. Uh, even if one did come to my store, the dude would want full retail for it, right? He would sell it to Rudy for two, but he'll want at least nine and a half for me. And that's the way to make money. Um, it's really just a very interesting marketing ploy, but it is it does have heavy risk. I just don't see the Pharaohs Beyond Death I know he was suggesting that everyone would, would just want one of them, like the Master Packs. and But that's not... I mean, how are the Master Packs doing right now? Not as good as they did before it turned out that Modern is not a premier format anymore. So things can change on a flip. They can change so rapidly. Um, there could be a new product, and they could reprint it. There's nothing that says they cannot reprint this product in other supplemental they have used uh, Judge artwork before. They have used, um, the, in the standard showdown cases, I, in the very first ones, the reason I went ham on them is because you could get expeditions. You could get masterpieces and the very first standard showdown packs. I, I think a lot of people forgot about that because you can't do that and it's been a long time since the first packs. But the very first packs, you could actually get masterpieces in those packs at a pretty good ratio like a really incredibly high ratio compared to, you know, getting a masterpiece in the wild. And I bought all of them. I just gobbled up them all and opened them. Um, and I can tell you it was not a bad decision because that ratio was much higher than I've ever seen or will ever see. And I did get a few nice masterpieces from that. So you never know. I mean, you never know. I could see these being in showcase, uh, standard show, um, down booster packs, even though we don't have that anymore. I could see these as, you know, prizes that you give out when you spend more money, I guess. Like uh, in the Pokemon Center, you spend a prize wheel after spending, you, you have to pay more money, right? So you spent your 500, 5,000 yen, your $50, and then you pay another 5,000, which is uh, five, no, 50, okay, 50,000, okay. Just at the Pokemon Center in Japan, you spend enough money, then you get a ticket, and then you pay more money to spin something on a wheel, and then you get something really cool. I could see something like that happening in Magic easily. Bye, guys.